<laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to Feelings, Feeling, Feelings. I'm your host, Desbel Mandel, and I'm here with my friend, Jesse Yarbrough. Hey. The one and only celebrity makeup artist extraordinaire. <laughs> I don't know if I like my bangs. <laughs> the more I look at them, I'm like, mm, I don't know. It's just because I saw a photo of myself with voluptuous mm-hmm. Des hair, and I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, I want that back. That's the worst, though. I just saw my hair like my brown hair a picture and i was like that was cute as a brunette and then i was like if i tell my hair style so she's gonna be like i like no, no. hair like this i do too but then i also want it every other way <laughs> same oh shit hold on i forgot something <gasps> oh no oh no oh the cards yeah you forgot those last time too <laughs> <laughs> i know i'm trying to get better i didn't forget it when me and zach filmed because we filmed a whole episode just on the cards we should do an episode like that yeah, you said that. Where we I just think. answer cards. You have like three episodes planned for us. Oh, yeah. Each person, I'm like, let's just record. Record them all while you're here. Are we doing more than one? I mean, if we feel like it. I we mean, don't we have can. to. Yeah. We could just do one of all just this okay. episode. All the cards. But first. <laughs> this episode. <laughs> no, no, no. So I'm starting to say at the beginning of every episode, like I'm not a therapist. I mm. am just giving you tools that I've learned on my journey. You could use them if you'd like. You don't have to use them. Therapy period. is encouraged. Therapy <laughs> is very encouraged. Are you still in therapy? Yeah, girl. Every Monday at four with my girl Lori. <laughs> What's up, Lori? Yeah. <laughs> is she listening? Love your word. Nervous. <laughs> She's like, you didn't say that in therapy. <laughs> I'm like, I'm more calm and collected on the outside, Lori. She sees all of it yeah today we're going to be talking it's a book club day it is i think it's my first book club episode really yeah i don't think i've talked about a book yet i feel like the episode we did we talked about books because i had people like reach out and be like what book should i read for this issue yeah Mm -hmm. i think that yeah i think we talked about all books yeah so this one we're talking about if you're watching you could see it it's called whole again by jackson mckenzie and it's my favorite book now literally today when I went back and like read it like I was trying to see like refresh my mind Mm -hmm. I kept highlighting more things I'm like fuck. I need to reread it it's so it's a lot of information just finished it and I need to reread it yeah it's so good okay but first I want to do a question okay okay Okay. let's shuffle okay here's the question from the not really strangers new year's edition what goal this past year did you accomplish sooner than expected that's a good question. That is a good question. And like, oh, <laughs> I was like, that's funny. It's about ye- like the new year, but it's a new it's year's like- edition. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what a great cool. time to have that color. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I forgot. I love how they do like different editions. Like I, I want them all. I know. It's so good. We're not really strange if you want to sponsor feelings, feelings, feelings. Just send me all the card decks because I will use them all. Yeah. I love oh, it. So good. Okay. Wait. So what is, what did I accomplish sooner than I thought? Yeah. What goal this past year did you accomplish sooner than expected? It's funny because I haven't been setting goals. So I guess I did, um, I set down like in the beginning of the year last year, I wrote down the rates I wanted Mm -hmm. for like each thing, like a do and go, a half day and a full day. And I was like, I will not accept anything lower than these rates. Mm -hmm. And I, with it, like. I, I don't know it feels weird saying it's a goal and I accomplished it because it just feels like it was like a mindset change and it happened yeah but, but that's like, still a yeah I guess you accomplished that you yeah know? like you made it happen so I guess by like April of last year I was like only working for the rates I wanted to work and I wasn't like mm-hmm. saying no to th- or I wasn't saying yes to things I didn't want to do so I guess that was a goal I accomplished that is that's a good goal yeah you get paid what you're worth honey yeah <laughs> I'm trying to think what mine is. I don't even know. I guess Ugh, it's so silly because, you know, I'm <laughs> editing the podcast and mm-hmm. I feel like I say the same things on every episode where I'm like, my healing journey is going really <laughs> yeah. well. But it, I mean, that's literally all I did last year. Well, that's me. That's like my goals haven't been like money or like work. It's all been yeah. like, I want to learn how to let go of what I'm holding on to. Yeah. I guess, okay, since I'm allowed to say that. I mean, I was allowed to say it anyways. But <laughs> <Your podcast. laughs> yeah, it's I don't know. Because um, I wanted, to, wanted it to be like a goal, but fuck it. Anyways, one thing I accomplished was, you know, I was at the end of last year, I was trying to heal the relationship 
part of me. Mm-hmm. And honestly, it's perfect. This book literally helps me. And like, I keep like now, like the last few days, I keep thinking, I'm like, am I done with that part? And I'm like, mm. technically you're not done, but ever. But, you know, I just feel like I'm like, is there more work to be done? Because I feel yeah. pretty good. <laughs> like, like, I understood it with one book. Like, yeah. I'm just like, oh, done. Kind of On to the next. Though. When other things take much longer. Like, I thought this was going to be months and months and months. Yeah, but and something will come up that's months and months and months. So just true. have it. Just let it be. Like, let cool. It, enjoy it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But like, don't try to make it a thing. Yeah, you good, sis. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it's crazy. This book literally helps me with that. That's why I got this book. Because, yeah. okay, backstory for me. You could share whatever you want to share, you know. But Can I get water before oh we dive into this? Yeah. So sorry. My throat is parched and I keep being like, <coughs> <coughs> and I'm like, I'm going to stop. Okay. Fine. Sorry. Water break. Water break. You good? Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to say? The- what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I was going to add to the goal that you were saying is that you diving into your relationships is like you accomplishing a goal just that the- even if you didn't heal it, even if you didn't heal it, like, uh-huh. like you just opening that wound yeah was enough of a goal because you were very scared to dive into that I avoided my abusive relationship for years Mm -hmm. literally (laughs) literally you did (laughs) yeah and yeah I for sure yeah I get what you're saying like just even looking at it is a goal in itself yeah yeah actually when you say that I think of I keep having like flashes of like me even talking to my sister about Mm -hmm. it like I told you about that right yeah crazy yeah yeah but yeah this book that's why I got this book because I was like ready to look at it because I knew I knew I had to look at it in order for me to be open to even thinking of dating yeah you know so oh yeah backstory (laughs) whenever I was 18 um I had my first boyfriend and we dated for like two three years and it was like very abusive and like emotionally and physically and I had to get a restraining order I moved to California to get away from Florida it was a whole thing and I literally haven't looked at it like until like November of last year Mm -hmm. and that was 10 years ago well no more I was 18 when it started and I stopped at 20 so 11 years god damn and I haven't dated anyone since then because I don't know at the during my years and <laughs> during my 20s I was just like oh no no it's my choice I just don't technically is my choice but I'm just like no I just don't feel like dating but I never knew why yeah you know? but you also like love romance and you love dating and you love love yeah so I love, it was, like, love so contradicting because yeah. you would just pick like, I can't wait to be in love and I'd be like well are you dating You're like no I don't want to date <laughs> I'm like, okay so that explains me to a T. I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want yeah. to. That sounds like scary. More than anything in the world, I am so excited to be in love. Oh, it's going to be awesome. I can't wait. But I always tell you, remember when we lived together, we'd be on the couch. And I'm like, imagine one day we're both going to have boyfriends. <laughs> yeah. You'd be like, they're going to be sitting on the couch with us. And then you'd be like, what if they don't get along? They have to get along. I'm like, they have to get along. Yeah. They have to be best friends. Yeah. I literally made this whole story of like our boyfriends being friends and sitting on the couch with us. <laughs> that was during covid too so i think i was going a little crazy i'm just like imagine if we had boyfriends <laughs> just like see you like imagine them on the couch talking to them yeah it's like they're here yeah <laughs> insert whatever your name is here but we had the names <laughs> <laughs> don't look at me don't look at me we had the names yeah we we knew who we wanted anyways <laughs> that's a whole another thing <laughs> that will never be discussed yeah that will never be discussed so while I opened up that healing part of me, I looked up uh, toxic relationship books. I'm the one who told you about this book, mm-hmm. right? Cool. Yeah, I was gonna say, you <laughs> love that. Yeah, Jessie's usually the one who tells me about books, but I told her about this one and I was so happy she liked it. I'm just like, I knew it. I'm like, wow, I'm a booker. <laughs> I book. I recommend books. I recommend books and like they're good. Anyways, so I looked up healing books and this one it literally says healing your heart and rediscovering your true self after after toxic relationships and emotional abuse. Perfect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like that's exactly what I want. And I don't think I did any more research. I yeah. said buy it, bought. I know. And sometimes I that can be it. like you don't know what you're buying, you know. Yeah. <laughs> 
but I'm, it, it worked out. Yeah. I've just done that where I like Google something and it comes up on Amazon. I'm like, cool, I'll buy it. And then I start reading. I'm like, this is dumb. Yeah, so this ain't it. <laughs> so it's cool that this was like everything that's needed to be known. Yeah, this book literally says everything that like it, it made me feel seen. That's mm-hmm. what this book made me feel. I was Same. like, wow, wow. Like this book is highlighted and like posted to the gods, like literally. Out of uh, 10 stars, what do you rate this book? I think I would, I would rate it a nine where I'm mm-hmm. at. I think for someone who, ha- it kind because it's written for people, it's like, it's like the journey of healing, uh-huh. you know, like in this part. But I don't think if you've done any other work that you could dissect this book. Oh, okay. Yeah, I agree. I think it's really, it's a lot of information and like really intense yeah. and like, it like makes it seem like anyone could read this and only hear your heart. But I'm like, there, you have, there's so many layers to get to where this is. Yeah. And I think that's why we like it Yeah, because we've done so much work. We've done the, like just understanding mindfulness. Yeah. Understanding meditation. I agree. So it's like, I super recommend and super love it, but I do think it's, it's advanced healing. Well, it's just <laughs> like a lot. Like it could be super triggering and like, yeah, I mean, it was triggering for me. I was reading some of it and I was like three years ago, I would have diagnosed myself with every one of these dis- these disorders. Yeah, because it's literally like, I'm like I still did. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm I'm all like these am I bipolar? Do I have this? Because I'm like, it, am I borderline? <laughs> yeah. Because it's like it's the concept of so many different things mm-hmm. and you can kind of relate to every single thing. So I do think it's like kind I'm, of just like an intense book. Yeah, I get I what say. you're saying. Yeah, I get it. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll do like a, <laughs> I've never really talked about a book on the podcast. So I'm like, I don't even know how to do this. So basically the book talks about how whenever you have trauma and you help me if I'm saying things wrong. Like, and you're like, you have trauma. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> she raised her hand. <laughs> trauma. I said, I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> so basically the book talks about whenever something traumatic happens to you, your body has a core wound oh hold on that's why I made post-it notes so I could give examples say yeah you're going like I feel like that's the way you do this podcast you just go through your post go through notes. my post-it notes so yeah your body creates core wounds when you have trauma and some core wounds examples are like inadequacy you know like you're not good enough others are better than you rejection uh you're unlovable you have fear like someone is dangerous or harmful resentment, jealousy, worthlessness, guilt, shame, powerlessness, and emptiness. Those are just some examples. Um, Do you want to tell them your core wounds? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I think I have multiple. Okay. But I say like inadequacy. Yeah, that was my number one. was my number one because I think I... I struggle with like worthiness Mm -hmm. and like not being enough, which is all kind of the core wound of inadequacy. Yeah. Mine for sure was inadequacy and um, fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. Mine's fear of abandonment. Ooh, fine. (laughs) (laughs) Not fun. Not at all. (laughs) Not fun at all. But it's, it is like this book teaches you that once you figure out your core wound, you know, it gets better. So anyways, when your body creates these core wounds, your body like doesn't like the feeling of those core wounds obviously like you don't want to fear like feel fear of rejection and like all these things so your body literally um, protects you and creates uh, the protective self Mm -hmm. and also this is like whenever like you're younger when trauma happens to you because you don't have the tools yet to fix your core wound right Mm -hmm. that's what he says and then whenever you're older and you understand healing more and this could be any age but like when you understand healing more then you kind of can do it quicker but anyways your body I'm all, I love this book I'm just like I just want to keep talking um so your body uh, creates a protective self around the core wound so you don't have to feel the core wound so some protective selves are like it can come in external measures of worth like accomplishing things making money social media validation attention seeking valid validation seeking approval seeking being overly nice I highlighted I that know. one. I highlighted that. I hi- like I highlighted all the yeah. ones. I'll you know, just re- that list. I was like, yep, yep, yeah. yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Literally, the whole thing is yellow. <laughs> I'll just read the ones that I highlighted. Okay, um, there's people pleasing, perfectionism, obsessing about those who wronged you, alcohol, sex, overeating, fantasies or daydreaming, fantasies of you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into that. <laughs> 
because that that was crazy. <laughs> then you just saw you giggling as you said it. You're like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, Oof. Excessive daydreaming, changing careers, moving consistently or moving constantly. Sorry. Being a workaholic. And then you could feel it in like your shoulders, your head, your stomach, your legs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is Jesse's whole body, yeah. right? I feel every trauma I've ever had in yeah. every part of my body. Yeah, I think that's how, like, I mean, I feel stuff too, but you feel it, like, on a different level in your body. You feel your emotions just in generally, yeah. so that's probably why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, and then there's also sensations like numb, empty, bored, tight, tired, um, etc. So, Yeah. Basically, the book is saying how, like, you have to kind of remove the protective self and then just sit with your core wound and, like, not really do anything, but just, like, kind of feel it, right? It's hard to explain because it's, yeah. like, you just be with it, be mindful of it. And mm -hmm. whenever, like, you feel yourself, like, seeking attention, like, look at me, look at me, look at me, like, that is your protected self and you need to shut that down mm -hmm. nicely like a child, you know, and just be like, hey, hey. Yeah. like, it's cool. Like, you're doing this because... But you the first fear step rejection. is just to see it. Yeah. Because shutting it down, if you start shutting it down, that's when that like cycle yeah. of like your protective self is still going on. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing I got from the book is that like, I'm very self-aware, but I shut it down right away. I'm like, oh, you're thinking you're not worthy. Mm -hmm. Stop that. But then that's just it's a cycle of, of me like being mean to myself because I'm not letting myself feel how I'm actually feeling. Yeah. So it's like the first step is to be like, oh, you are thinking you're not worthy. Mm -hmm. Why? Yes. And like sitting with that. And then over time, you understand why and your protective self will like start. Disappear. Yeah, will start to disappear. Yeah. And like when your core wounds start going away, like you start realizing that the reason why I feel fear of rejection is not even that wasn't even mine, my core wound to begin with. Someone gave it to me. Mm -hmm. and like you know the feeling of inadequacy someone gave that to me like I before my that relationship I never felt inadequacy mm -hmm. I thought I was like the shining star <laughs> you know <laughs> like I was gonna be on Disney Channel you know and then <laughs> like you guys my sister I was very like in front of the camera but you know after that like it really tore me apart and it's mm -hmm. just like you're not good enough you know why would anyone want to look at you and why would ever anyone like listen to like the things that you have to say you don't know what you're talking about oh my god that made me emotional because <laughs> I'm like oh shit that's literally <laughs> yeah so that's like the essential first because the book isn't in chapters so it's very like interestingly divided yeah but the first like part of the book is talking about your core wounds and like identifying and then it goes into like I feel like it goes into like the different disorders yeah and when you date those disorders how your protective self responds which that's where I felt so seen like I yeah. was like do you uh, do you want to say which um for example the one I felt most seen in was the cluster b abusive mm -hmm. survivor was that yours too yeah but also bipolar the mm. like because I think that was the day I went between those two. Uh -huh. Oh, but then the PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mine is like this one and avoidant. Yeah. Those are the top. I, can I think also of. did that one too. Well, because I could see the core is like my dad. Like uh -huh. this whole book was m me like the core of it was the abusive relationship with my dad. But then all these guys that I've dated that have the same like similar characteristics of my dad and those spread out between a bunch of different yeah. things yeah. so cluster b was the one i think the i date a lot of cluster b people and then i think my dad is like bipolar which made me like have ptsd yeah and i became a boy <laughs> love that oh, all of them <laughs> this whole book yeah. so the cluster b abuse survivor basically cluster b relationships are people who are like psychopaths narcissists borderline basically when you're in a relationship with these type of people they literally break you down whenever you start dating someone like a narcissist like they make you feel like so special and validated and like amazing and like you're the best thing that's ever happened and then they start going crazy and mm -hmm. you're like stuck with it and you're just like well you don't have to be stuck with it but you know I was stuck with it forever but we're out of it now <laughs> starts to cry <laughs> every survivor of a cluster b disorder like they deal with a sense of rejection or inadequacy 
and the survivors tend to feel inferior and unwanted. And there's also a fear of being crazy and nagging doubt that everything was secretly their own fault, which Mm -hmm. when I saw that, I was like, holy shit, that was me forever. Mm -hmm. Like, because he made me feel like it was my fault. Yeah. Like they do. Yeah. It's so stupid. Mm -hmm. Hey, just don't be a dick out there when you're dating people. (laughs) Like, it's own your own shit like it's crazy that's been a lot of my relationships <laughs> that's sad i know <laughs> why do you think you what haven't you learned because <laughs> you know how they say like yeah the, the re- repetition yeah like the, the universe keeps giving you something if you haven't learned the lesson or something like yeah that. so i feel like i just it like fully clicked and i feel like i like finally let it go mm-hmm. this gives me like a whole this is like a down this is like a lot of information that i like have thought about i don't know if it's like i'll just say it the boy that you know fucked me up recently well that or, one or and the, the one before him that was essentially the same person yes. like let's oh, be real okay okay it was like a 2.0 yeah <laughs> and Oof. yeah and i think when I met 2.0. <laughs> That's an old name. 1.0. Yeah, I don't want to like one and say two. names. Oh, don't. No, no, no. <laughs> God, no. So what I think I have learned from that is my over ability to like learn and craving knowledge. From this person? From, from these people? It just in general. Mm-hmm. So it's like I see 1.0. I see the patterns that happened to that. And then I see 2.0 the patterns that happened in that and then 3.0 comes about Mm -hmm. and I had let go of so much I felt so confident I felt like everything was like in alignment Mm -hmm. so I trusted the alignment which was right because I was supposed to meet him and I was supposed to learn from him Mm -hmm. but I didn't trust myself in what I thought was wrong with him because I was like oh like all of these things I've learned like everything is coming into play finally yeah this is like the person i'm supposed to be with and he was doing things like love bombing and we learned about that. yeah and <laughs> wait that's love, love bombing just so you, the people who don't know basically just like overly loving you immediately like yeah as, like the first dates yeah and that's what happened yeah literally the first date <laughs> we were like obsessed with each other and we didn't leave each other's side for like two and months it, and it sucks because like it's fun. It's fun. And I wanted to trust because my whole thing is I push people away. Yeah. And that's why, yeah, going, I remember you going yeah. into this relationship, you're like, I'm just going to let it happen. Yeah. I wanted to trust it and I wanted yeah. to be fully aware. And I think that's where like my learning overrided each other. Cause instead of being like, cause I felt my body being really anxious about things. Mm-hmm. I felt myself wanting to retract. And instead of listening to myself, I was like, no, no, no. Like this is what you do. You push people away. So now I think Ooh, I'm that's in this interesting. place I get what you're saying. that it's like, I'm finding the balance of it. Like, mm-hmm. yes, feel your emotions and understand them. You missed the opportunity to say, feel your feelings, feel your feelings, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> and then, but then also trust yourself. And like, yeah. that was like, I think what I was learning in this last relationship because I was just like overwhelmed and he was doing all these things that were so right. But what I'm seeing now is like when you look at like someone you've dated, you know, like when I look at that guy, it's like I didn't know him and he didn't know me. And so what are we obsessing over each other for? You know, it's it's hard. It's hard because I also like I've heard people be like, you know, you can't meet someone and fall in love immediately. And I'm like, okay, but I met this person. We have immediate connection, attraction. And you connect with people hard and deep. Yeah. You, I think I told you once, I was like, you can't do that to every single person. But I don't know how not to. And there are people I just don't connect with. And that's the thing, like with me with like dating, like I'm not that kind of girl who every date I go on, I'm like, I love you. Yeah, I it's very rare that I meet someone and I'm like, oh wow. But then when yeah. I do, I cannot let go of them. Yeah. And I think with like him, it was like the connection was so easy, so I wanted everything else to be so easy, but I felt yeah. myself retracting. So it was like this whole like internal battle where I was like trying to figure out what was real, but now that I've stepped out, I'm like what I learned and that was the whole point I think of that relationship is like you can't fall in love in a night because mm-hmm. the truth of love is like you can connect and you can vibe and you can feel an immediate attraction and connection. But like love is like built over time. You don't yeah. know someone. 
And every part of me that he was like infatuated with is what he saw, but it wasn't truly me. But then I thought like, oh, because I was so open and vulnerable and I told him so much about myself and we like cried to each other. I thought we were so like, I thought he really did see me, but now I'm just like, now that you're out of it. Yeah. And like the truth of it is like, you have to have time and like, that's Mm -hmm. the only way. Yeah. And I have to trust myself and my body because my body was talking that really? whole, oh I was well, like what your what did you feel in your body during that like time? anxiety like I could feel the tension even though you were having the best time yeah mm-hmm. I could feel my pull like I could feel me being like you need to slow down this is not real yeah. but I also was like this is what you do you push people and like yeah. you don't like I feel like I've had a lot of relationships where that's been the issue but then now bigger picture I'm like they were just doing the same thing and I was protecting myself so it's like this is such a rant but like the protective self is sometimes correct yes and so I think that's where I'm trying to learn is like the balance of like that's a good point like you need to also listen to your body yeah and your mind like if your mind is like this is too fast this is not real like Mm -hmm. this guy your intuition your gut yeah you know your gut is in the same location as or what is it it's like you know like whenever you the decision part of your mind Mm -hmm. your gut feels it first that's why they say trust your gut because before it gets to your mind your gut feels it first isn't that so cool science that's wild yeah no but like that's like a real thing that's why they say trust your gut yeah that's like a thing you hear your whole life whether you know about intuition or not it's like your whole life you're a trust your gut and like I think that's where I'm like reading this book I was like oh like I have to just find the balance in general of my healing. Cause mm-hmm. like, I think I could read a book like this and be like, fuck my core wound, fuck my protective <laughs> self. Like I trust everything. And then yeah. this is skipping. But at the end of the book, he talks about that. How like, you just need to let it go. Right. You just need to let it go. That's, and like, remember I texted you. I'm like, I don't like the end <laughs> <laughs> because I was, you know, I'm very like, I need to dissect it mm-hmm. now that like, it's been like a few weeks since I read it. I'm like, yeah. fine. <laughs> And he says, he says to let it go, but he also says like, you will still get rejected. You'll still feel abandonment. You will still feel inadequate. Like people will still do things like that to you, but Mm -hmm. the way your body and yourself takes it will be new. So like, I guess that is like the sense of dropping your protective self. But Mm -hmm. also I think there is like tapping into your intuition to protect yourself. Maybe not having a protective self, but like protect yourself because I do I mean, think, always protect yourself yeah like you won't find me in another abusive relationship right you know so it's like you can't ignore that yeah you have to you know get in a healthy relationship right it's seeing the signs now and I think like this 3.0 <laughs> <laughs> I'm like oh like it and honestly reading this book and like really taking steps to understand why I don't let go of people mm-hmm. was like why why is it you think that I don't let go of people or you don't oh I because I just like love so hard and I deeply connect and I think when I know someone like you know I love like a deep combo and I love like knowing who someone is so once I know who someone is Mm -hmm. I don't blame them for anything they do because I'm like which they also talk about that in the book yeah that's part of the protective wound like that's one of them you like give people the benefit of the doubt and you love people and like you're like you like well they're trauma and you give them every reason for every you defend but it keeps them happening so much yeah, yeah. then and you have to learn yourself yeah so i have to stop it's like okay yeah they hurt you and you love them that's you love them for their soul the parts of the soul that you saw but like that doesn't mean you defend them and you don't have to hold on to them yeah like i was telling my therapist i was like i feel like i have them like this like the arthur meme where i'm just like oh <laughs> i won't can't let them go and yeah. it's like you literally just Just release your hand. Like it's all in your power. Yeah. And I'm sitting here like, oh, but I can't do it. And it's like, yeah, that's okay. So with my thing (laughs) with the fantasies, Mm -hmm. that's what it felt like when I released it. Remember, I think I told you one night. Okay. With me, I, because I have fear of rejection, you know, and like I haven't dated because I have that fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I create these elaborate fantasies. Like if I have a crush on someone, like, we're in a relationship in my head which is not good and I understand that like I've always understood it but I could never let it go like it just always happens yeah because my I have a perfect life I have a perfect relationship in my head with this person yeah you know and then you know during reading this like near the end like I was laying in my bed fantasizing and 
when I say fantasize, like it's it literally takes up my whole day. <laughs> you like, told me that, and yeah, because you know I have like whenever I tell people that they're like, oh, I have fan- I f- have fantasized too. I'm like, I think it's different. Yeah, I think it's different because like whenever okay, I was laying in my bed and I was thinking that like you know, and the book taught me like to just like release it and. Literally, I don't know what happened. I think I just understood it like that. And it was like the releasing. Yeah. You know, and it was just like, wait, that's unfair. One, to the person, Mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, I don't want any expectations. Like, that's so mean of me to hold expectations of this perfect relationship in my (laughs) head. (laughs) And also, like, not fair to myself, you know. So it's like, I would rather live in my mind than in real life. So... Yeah, <laughs> that's the truth. Literally something clicked in my head. And I swear to God, my you know, like when you crack your back, mm-hmm. something cracked in my head. It was so weird. And then the fantasies just went away. And I was like, and then the days after that, I literally like, I was bored at some points in the day because I'm like, what do I usually do? What do I do with my time? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that fucked up though? Like I didn't even realize that that's... this fantasy world took up so much of my life. Yeah. You know, now I'm like, I'm getting so much done. Yeah. Because I just have so much more uh, space in my head. Like, bandwidth is crazy. Damn. Yeah, it's fucked up. And don't get me wrong, the fantasy still, like, my protective self yeah. keeps trying to get in. And, like, now that I'm fully aware of it, like, I do feel better at, like, just being like, hey, yeah. Come to the real world. Yeah. Like, it's fine. If that's meant to happen, it'll happen. Yeah. Like, no don't matter don't, how much you create it in your mind but that's also like the I mean I don't know if this is why you do it but it's like the um like the contradicting healing it things Mm because like they do tell you to do that to manifest yeah that is like a manifestation tool is to like if you see it and envision it Mm -hmm. but then there's extremes of everything (laughs) where you can just but I'm the same where it's like you know being realistic I'm Mm -hmm. way too realistic like I don't like we're again perfect girl like me and me me and Jesse always used to say we're the perfect girl because we're just so not polar opposites we're polar. kind of yeah, we're polar and if opposites. we just found the balance between us both it would Perfect be so girl. great <laughs> but we just don't and like that's i'm so realistic and that like i just like don't know how to like get so, out of reality and like so you don't have fantasies in your head no so you don't have like when you <laughs> meet a when you have like have a crush on a guy like you meet a guy you're like oh my mm-hmm. god he's so cute like you don't think like you don't in your head <laughs> it's so hard to explain without me sounding psycho (laughs) so like you don't like um make up a fantasy in your head like oh it would be so cool if like you know he texted me and then like he asked me out then we went to the beach and then we did this and like then we get married just kidding (laughs) i don't go that far yeah i don't go that far same (laughs) i don't go that far (laughs) then we get a dog and a house and like a golden retriever named bentley (laughs) oh bentley um but yeah you don't do that (laughs) <laughs> so <laughs> I would say like now in my like trying to find balance and being open to like not shutting everything off I'm more like oh I could date this person okay like I'm allowing myself to I used to just like day by day like we're on a date and I'm like oh he's cool but like if he doesn't text me back tomorrow whatever oh so you're not like freaking out like I want him to text me back No, but I also think, again, that's like protective self because I just never let myself be open to feeling for people. Like, I I would just be like, yeah, whatever it is, what it is. So I think finally I got to the point and I would probably say with 3.0, I let myself be like, oh, like I could date him. Like I would I would be with him Mm -hmm. and I could see us becoming something more. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, because it didn't work out, that's when I was like, I went into like a backtrack I was like this is why I don't open myself up blah 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 mm-hmm. and then I had to be like okay I didn't do this much work to close off again and like mm-hmm. I have to truly like trust the reason I met him and now that I really see it like I reread my journals from last year mm-hmm. and the first day I met him I was like this is a lesson I was supposed to meet him oh so you knew from I the knew from the start go. like I was like this is so obviously meant to happen and I don't know why but it's mm-hmm. like everything in my power knows and I was like so I have to trust what happens 
and it played out and I, I see it took me a minute. Like I was just so hurt and Mm -hmm. so sad about it that once I removed myself and I really dissected it and like let myself feel it, that was what I had to do. Cause I went into my like, fuck it. I don't care. Mm Mm-hmm started hooking up with another guy <laughs> like a week later like but that's what everyone usually does yeah you know that's the normal the rebound guy you know yeah and I did distract myself and I was fine but it's weird now in this state of healing I could tell that wasn't okay anymore like yeah. my body was like and my mind was like you're like avoiding it didn't feel good when normally avoid it's fine like I, I genuinely did not feel anything yeah we know too much now I know my like my I'm so aware and like a and that's where I see my growth and my healing I was like wow you can't ignore this and I sat with it and like when I finally sat with it without judgment I really let it go and like Mm -hmm. let the simple little things that hurt me hurt me instead of like being like that's so dumb like yeah it was such a short period of time like why does it hurt you why do you care like I was like no like because you have feelings yeah (laughs) which I didn't know I could do i'm so proud of you thanks i'm very proud of you for actually like one letting yourself experience this and also to like understanding that you know yeah letting yourself feel it like it was for a reason so you could learn this yeah horrible thing yeah <laughs> but it's but good. there was it's like good. good to it you know yeah. like i feel like like i wrote like ali my girl ali nympho did this <laughs> thing yesterday or the day before that was like ask me a question mm-hmm. and i literally was like why is it hard as fuck to let things go that you know that you should let go Mm -hmm. and she like responded it's like the attributes that you're clinging on to Mm -hmm. of that person or that thing and where you can find it in other places in your life that's when you can release it Mm. and I like finding in yourself yeah or just like in your friends like in Mm -hmm. feeling like so loved or chosen or whatever it is you're seeking it's Mm -hmm. like I have people in my life that give me that so it's like focus on that rather than like Oh, I lost it. And I think yeah. I took some time to be like, what am I feeling like I lost or from these people like that I don't have anymore, like from my dad or from these guys. And it's like the very, even if it was a small portion of time or one thing that they did, it was very down to like, I felt chosen or I felt safe mm-hmm. in myself. Like I could be myself with them. And I was like, that was what I was like holding on to is that feeling from them but then I like redirected to like everyone in my life that I already have that with and that really like helped me release it because I was like oh I'm holding and then my logical brain steps in which does help and it's like they did that for such as like that wasn't even like real when they were giving it to you so Mm -hmm. what are you holding on to and then I was like oh (laughs) yeah 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 you're right yeah (laughs) yeah so like that's why when you know books and podcasts and everyone says like before you can date someone else like you have to all the things you want you have to find it in yourself and that's a good point or your friends Mm -hmm. but for me I think because I love my friends so much but I like I don't know why but for me it's like I have to find it myself yeah so my thing right now I'm trying to hey back at the same thing surrender yeah me and Jesse love surrendering (laughs) to the universe (laughs) it's so hard but like I'm back there and like I was just writing like how like I trust the goddess and I trust you know blah 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 and then I like I, I don't know what I was writing about but basically I got to the point where I was like me and the universe are the power is the power couple I've been wanting because I want to be in a power couple because you know yeah don't we all yeah so and then like that I wrote that and I literally like was like oh my god I found my power couple and I'm like, good, thank God it's with the universe. Yeah, like, <laughs> you don't let me She down. got my back, yeah. He wrote, that's like, the end of the book is where I like really went crazy with highlighting. But I think like one of the last pages, he says that. That Des is a power couple with the universe? Yeah, that's exactly. Oh, right here. <laughs> Desabelle. <laughs> um, she is a power couple. It is less about declaring I am and more about letting go of what you are not. And I think that's what, I do like this. It's like, this is not a matter of consciously declaring I'm unconditionally. I'm, I am unconditional love. It's like when you remove all the resistances to love, love comes back home to where it belongs. It's a natural state of being how you're intended to exist. So it's kind of like that whole, like when we're like, I am safe. I, the, even the, we, yes, like it does help reprogram your brain. Like mm-hmm. he was explaining it as like, until you let go of why you don't feel safe and why yes. you don't feel loved then you can't 
really step into that. Yeah. And that whole, I think that's what, like, when he's like, it's less about declaring I am and more about letting go. And I think, like, with that, with, like, the power couple or, like, finding it, it's like, yeah, it's like letting go of, like, you're accepting what you have. Yeah. And, like, letting go of what you're not. And that's, I think, where, like, the true surrender can come in. Period. (laughs) Come on, (laughs) Jesse. Yeah. No. Yeah, I agree. To me, this book broke down healing, the healing process. Like, I guess in the way I experience it. Yeah. Like, it was very good. I'm just going to read some things I highlighted because when I was looking through this earlier, I was like, wow. Each one, wow. So this part, it says, when we replace old, heavy, and sad feelings of longing with spiritual sensations of unconditional love, we start meeting our own needs. Mm, It's like literally what you were just saying. Yeah. Where it's just like, it's just like, just surrender literally but that that is so hard and that i think like bothers me sometimes in books where it's like you just have to let go you have to surrender that is both of our worst yeah we can't do it the word surrender triggers yeah let go triggers me i remember one time i was like i have such a hard time letting go of people and you're like are you new (laughs) (laughs) just like you've been like this and i was like i don't know why it took me so long to accept like I didn't even realize I was just like was just like don't let go of people. Yeah. My thing is I'm so controlling. I'm like, hmm. no, I want this thing. This is how it's going to happen. Because mm-hmm. I know if it happens exactly like this, it's going to happen. But the truth is, it's not. that's not how life is. I don't yeah. know how anyone's going to react. I don't even know. Yeah, I don't know the answer to anything. I just think I do. That's like another lesson I learned <laughs> in 3.0 mm-hmm. because he was like, to a T like written on paper everything I thought I wanted Mm -hmm. like yeah you know down to the nitty-gritty yeah and I got it and literally I remember being like I don't know what I want anymore like I have no yeah it kind of blank slated you which is good it was like the most like I was like I got everything I thought I wanted and Mm -hmm. it's not it wasn't for me yeah so what is for me I don't know. And I genuinely am just like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I, that like forced me to surrender because it was kind of like God's way of being like, oh, you want this, 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 here you go. Yeah. Oh, it still isn't for you. And I was like, <laughs> he said, he said, what you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's why like with the whole surrender thing too, it's like, for example, I have a crush on this boy and I've had a crush on him forever, but um, <laughs> we won't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't speak on that because I'm surrendering. Uh, <laughs> whenever you told me that before, like when it was mm-hmm. happening, you're like he was the perfect guy and it still didn't work. And I'm like, oh, that's a good perspective. Be like, I think this guy is the perfect guy. But what if he sucks? Like, what if he actually like, yeah. what if he's abusive? You know, I don't know his life. You see how much like I see how much I'm protected from always afterwards, mm-hmm. like multiple things when I've gotten out of it or like and I see the truth I'm like oh my god I was begging for that and now I see and I'm like I I'm being I was being so protected like it's not even funny it doesn't matter how much I pray God's like no 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 yeah just wait and then I see the truth I'm like oh (laughs) okay I just got the the chills just because remember Remember a long time ago, I wanted to date someone so bad. Yes, him. Oh, that retrospect. Yeah. That perspective. Where it's just like, now I'm like, thank fucking God. Yeah. Thank fucking God that, like, it didn't work out. Because remember, I pushed and I wanted it. And I was like, no, this is it. I swear to God, this is it. And now I'm like, oof, the close one. And now I'm like, I knew it. I knew it, universe. The universe is like, shut <laughs> up. So yeah, I'm just glad that that didn't work out because no offense to that person, but. But it is crazy that like, that <sighs> you just see that. And even like, I think about people that get pregnant at like 19. No shade, but <laughs> I'm like. The if one I who loves teen mom. I know. I'm like, no shade because you're my, I live for all of you, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Shout out to Kale. Yeah, because um, I for sure listen if yeah. you're feeling good. Kale follows Mary Lou, so no big deal. Really? Yeah, she's like my favorite teen mom. And I like messaged Mary Lou. I was like, <laughs> Kale follows you? She's like, I don't even know who that is. Random people, like Gaga's best friend follows Mary Lou. I was and I'm like, dying. wait, why? Okay, I was right. like, I live for Kale. Anyways, <laughs> but I'm like, if I would have gotten pregnant by the person I thought I loved at 19. What? And yeah. But if you would have told me that at 19, I was like, he's the perfect guy. Oh, yeah. You know, so it's like the perspective of relationships when they don't work out 
afterwards. And I think even that's when this one just ended, I was like, I have to try. I have no other way but to trust it. I can't force it back. Like even when we were breaking up yeah. in my mind, I wanted to be like, what can I do to change his mind? And I was like, I don't want to change his yeah. mind. Like, it's either you want it or you don't. Yeah. Like for them, you know? Yeah. And, but even if it's, if it's not working out, it's like, there's no reason to force this. Like, I don't want to, yeah. I, I know if it's not working out, that's for a reason. And what is for me will come. And like, ugh trust i know surrender Surrender. (laughs) but yeah everyone go read whole again me and jesse were saying off camera that like we probably have so much more to talk about and we both want to reread it again Mm -hmm. i want to reread it again because whenever i was reading it the first round i was very like thinking about a certain situation yeah so i'm probably going to give it some time but you know when i reread it again it's going to be for a different situation probably you know i think it and i think it's just it's like I was saying, there's so many layers to it. When I was reading it, the first part of it was kind of like things I understood. Some of the like cluster B stuff was like really mind blowing. And I saw how I do that. But it's kind of things I was already self-aware of. But at the end, when it starts talking about like letting go and surrendering, that's when it started clicking for me. And I was like, oh, my God, because this is my biggest thing is I don't let go. And now I'm like, I need to go reread this and like. With that in mind. With that in mind. Yeah. Because, yeah, like at the end, I literally, I kept texting you. I was like, my mind is blown. <laughs> I know. I wasn't texting you because I'm like, keep it for the podcast. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I was like, don't. Just so you guys know, also in this book, he breaks down each kind of personality mm-hmm. disorder. I don't yeah. know if they're disorders. But just so you know, if you're interested, like there's the cluster B abusive survivor, codependent, C PTSD, avoidant people pleaser <laughs> like i said I first i was like i'm all of them i literally <laughs> said all of those as the ones i connected with yeah the avoidant one that's a whole nother podcast yeah that's I'm, a thing remember when i realized i was avoidant i'm like uh-huh. oh my god <laughs> i'm like i ignored everything <laughs> oh shit <laughs> yeah but it's okay we're here now <laughs> surrender yeah yeah mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's just what I everything. I'm like, let go. <laughs> it hurts more to hold on. Yeah, period. Like, Ooh, like doing this hurts. Yeah, let go. Just let go. Be free. Be free. So. What? Well, what? Let's do. What was your biggest takeaway? Because I think I just like ranted for thirty minutes about my biggest takeaway. <laughs> so, like, what's yours? Um, I guess it. This book just made me one made me feel seen because I think with that relationship I just like I understood that he sucked for sure Mm -hmm. but I didn't understand how it affected me and how it's affected me for 11 years you know right so I think it just that's I think my biggest takeaway from it is just like made me understand why I feel certain things Mm -hmm. like why I'm scared to date anyone, you know, because I'm scared they're going to fucking abuse me. Yeah. Which is so sad. That's such a real fear, though. (laughs) Yeah. And it's it's crazy because, you know, like we said earlier, like I didn't even want to look at this part of my life. And this is the first time I looked at it. So, yeah, like that realizing that that's one of the reasons why I just don't want to date anyone. Yeah is yeah that was crazy and also you know all the stuff that I feel like had nothing that this person made me feel in that relationship like wasn't even about me yeah it's about him like there's a whole section where it's like it's not about you and it's all like oh thank you thank god thank god yeah and there was a part where he said like the reason why this person put so much hate on you is because they hate themselves like they didn't like themselves and I was like that's the truth (laughs) holy shit yeah it's just literally this book helped me with that whole situation so much i wish i wish i read this earlier because yeah it's been a while but it was meant to be now yeah it was definitely because even when i got to the end i just worked through all of this ideas of letting go and then i hit that and i was like (laughs) when i read that end of the book it was like lining up exactly where my mind was at yeah like every you always read the book when you're supposed to yeah it's true so i want jesse to come on another time and i want us to do another book we should do pussy yeah that one's that one's good that one's I, real i think i need to listen to it again yeah and read it again like to yeah pussy was good yeah that was another one of my recommendations yeah <laughs> yeah and if you guys want to read pussy before the podcast comes out you can like understand it pussy just so you know is all about like divine feminine energy and me and jesse are all about that life right now empowerment loving yourself 
what you attract. Yeah. How to like how to use our female abilities like magic to yeah. manifest and stuff. Like that shit that that book changed my world too. Yeah. That was, was like that's why I'm magical. Cause I have my, pussy. <laughs> my pussy. My <laughs> pussy. Yeah. Um but okay, we're gonna end it here because we could just keep talking, honestly. Yeah, this is what we do. Yeah. <laughs> like this is what we do off camera. We just keep talking about yeah. healing. It's been years with this. <laughs> Literally. But everyone go follow Jesse um, at Makeup by Jesse X mm-hmm. and um, follow me at Feelings, Feeling, Feelings. And if you want to follow me personally at Diaz Avell. And remember, I'm only on TikTok now. Uh, did I tell you that? Did you delete your Instagram? It's up there. It's, oh, okay. Like it's activated, but I, I'm not going you, on yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. Which, yeah, anyway. good. Yeah. Um, okay. And you want to say anything else? You good? Yeah. Read whole again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Love you. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Feelings, Feeling, Feelings. I hope your feelings are feeling something right now. Make sure you follow at Feelings, Feelings, Feelings on Instagram to join the Feelings, Feelings, Feelings community. I just want to remind you, you are magical, you are beautiful, and I love you. Now go drink a glass of water and tell yourself you love you in the mirror.